Hey everybody, welcome back for an author talk short. You have me here and Sophia, and we are definitely, we're still on this romance train, okay? We're talking about romance book. Sophia is also a presenter. She's going to be at Love of Palooza, but she's a romance writer. So Sophia, what kind of romance do you write? Um, I write almost all sorts of romance, actually. Um, I mostly write romantic suspense, which I know is Okay. part of what you love so I write yes. cops and cowboys um I write police procedurals um heavy bent on steamy romance but also very heavy bent towards bromance so I love seeing what these guys do together in a unit how they back each other up even if they've had a tiff the day before how they don't back each other up if they've had a falling out and what happens afterwards so that's that's sort of what I concentrate on a fair bit and then of course the girls have to come in and give them a mouthful of swell which is always a bit of fun um for not pulling their head in when they should so yes, I do a lot of uh, research. On yeah, we always yes. have to give our two cents. Okay, it's that is common. <laughs> well, I mean, At least that's we have to do that. So, what made you want yeah. to be a romance writer? Was it something you just kind of fell into, or was it you always had kind of desire and you love reading romance books? Kind of tell us a little bit about your story. Yeah, sure. So I, I've been reading Harlequin Romance since I was 12 years old because my little library, my small town library in Newcastle, Australia, was um, not a very big library. I went through the Dolly and the uh, romances and the Sweet Valley High romances pretty fast. Um, and then I hit into Agatha Christie and Ian Coons and Stephen King. And then there was the Harlequin section, right, where mum was reading all the Joanna Lindsay's and the Viking romance that was around in the 1980s. So I went through those like Mad Hatter. Um, and I, I still would like to work right for Harlequin at some point as well. So they're they're just little dreams that you have as a kid. Um, and I think it probably fixed up where I was heading for romance-wise. I do write Kid Lit. I write PNR. I write um, Reverse Harem. I write um, Spec Fig as well. <laughs> so I do cover an awful lot of ground. Um, but right, my romances that I write now are based around what I read in Harlequin in the 80s. So that sort of kicked it off for me. When my son was one year old, I decided that I would get into writing. Um, he's six now. And for three years, the first chapter of Collision sat on my laptop, originally named Cops and Robbers, because I had no other op original title in my head that's all I had and it just sat there and I couldn't even remember when I started writing again I couldn't even remember where quotation marks went or the comma or the full stop when I sat there pulling books out of the library going through all the all the punctuation trying to figure out how does this actually work because as a reader you don't see it that part has to be seamless so seeing that from a writing perspective as you start off is really quite confronting you're like I know nothing <laughs> you know I've got this story in my head but I know nothing so it's, you're starting fresh all over again so Wow. Yeah. See, I'm like that. Yeah. I haven't written a book. So I was just full transparency. I haven't. I work with authors. I haven't written a book. But at the same time, grammar and punctuation is not my strong suit. So it's just one of those things <laughs> where it's just like, I would be like you, I would struggle like 100%. That's what I would do. But you mentioned a little bit about your first book, Collision. And so tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about what direction or what that book in terms of romance is about. Absolutely. So Collision focuses around Cal and Mila and Cal is the hotshot rookie cop who stuffed up the arrest on a bank heist that Mila was in five years before the book starts and he let the bad guy get away. Having lived through uh, DV, um, PTSD from a a um, from a veteran husband as well, DV not being the husband, being somebody else, Um I've got a lot of PTSD experience personally and, yep, that's the brand new cover. I put that up yesterday. This book just turned two years old. Um, it, go, it delves really quite heavily into PTSD and I've had a couple of fabulous reviews as well about um, the backup between Cal and Mila of how they look after each other throughout this. Uh, basically the bad guy comes back to stalk them and haunt them both and they have to band together and he doesn't trust her because he is so sure that this guy has mind screwed his head. Can I say fuck on this? Um, you know, has, has screwed with his head so badly that he can't trust anybody anymore. So she works him back very, very slowly. There is a giant uh, artist's impression of a hamster featured in there, which I now have a lovely hamster that somebody gave me after <laughs> lovely stuffed hamster, hamster that rides with me after I wrote this book, um, Dolly, and she features in a couple of the books as well. But honestly, it's it's one of my favourite romances because it's my first and it was in my head for so long. You know, these guys were made for each other and it's just so critical that they beat through all the barriers together, although, of course, they don't figure that out until the last minute, which is always the case. 
Oh, yeah, it's always the case. And there's usually, you know, happy endings and things like that. But I mean, I can find that to be very relatable, especially, you know, with someone like you said, you have an understanding, you know, of PTSD and conveying that into your book. So was that something was that the easy part for you when it came to writing these types of romances that encompass these things? Or was that something that you really had to kind of inquire and go around to make sure you were getting a well rounded perspective on that? Honestly, it was unintentional. I didn't realize I'd done it until I finished the book and sent it out to beta readers. And they're like, oh, you did this so well. I'm like, oh my God, I didn't even realize that was in there. <laughs> so so it, just, it just sort of came out. I, re- I wrote that book over NaNoWriMo, um, which is novel, National Novel Writing Month um, in yeah. 2019, right before COVID hit. I had a broken hand. My husband was in the UK. I had three young kids at home home with me 18 months to five years and I decided that at night I was going to sit down <laughs> and write a novel so I wrote 70,000 words in that month and um, and put out that first book so it was it was a bit of a whirlwind to be honest. Wow well you know I have a special love for authors and I am acquiring a special love for romance authors okay I've learned so much in this author talk series short that I mean I'm probably I'm converted I'm just going to start reading romance <laughs> novels but I think yeah. I think every author has like a special love for their very first book that they've published Mm -hmm. and rightfully so you put so much time and effort and like fear into that book when you go to publish it that why not you should definitely have so much pride in that book and you should this is an amazing book you have over 100 reviews on Amazon for this book and they're all five stars I mean it is amazing so how many books total do you have and what different romance (laughs) crossovers do you kind of mix and jump in between okay so we worked, sat down and worked this out the other day since 20 december 2018 i've published 141 things um so some of that is kid lit um a lot of it is romance i think there's about 30 romance books um and i usually put out two to three books a month at this point um so it's 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 a full-on um capacity don't worry i'm not writing those now for next month these books are written a year before in advance i am a year in front of what it, what's actually going on um so oh, there is nice. no sort of panic rush at the other end it's just where it, the only time it falls apart for me is oh new shiny idea quick let's write that and three months later i'm like oh crap where's the schedule you know get get back onto the schedule otherwise next year is a write-off and of course we reshuffle things <laughs> You know, if people love a particular series, we reshuffle things to make sure that it all works as well. Um, my series are mostly interlinked. So Blue-Blooded Brothers, which Collision is the first book, it's a complete series of eight books plus a novella. Um, it is a crossover with my new series, Z-Boys, which released the first book last month. And I'm dropping a book a month for that series this year. It's Australian military. So I've taken the most popular character from the last book of Blue-Blooded Brothers and he has little cameo inserts into um into z boys as well so z boys is based on an original military unit in australia from world war ii they did a huge amount of covert ops all the sort of stuff that today in covert ops we sort of expect in world war ii this was uh, unheard of what they did they went into countries they shouldn't have been in they did things that is only just being released because the 75 years is up um, they were told that they couldn't possibly be doing what they were um, by a certain uh, major upstairs. And as a result, they snuck into Townsville Harbour the night after, put dummy bombs on every single Australian Navy ship and got out unnoticed. And the next morning, because of what they'd done, they were disbanded. So I wanted to give these guys had a very very short life expectancy. They didn't last their two years usually in service. So I wanted to write this series um, and, and really show what they could what these guys could do and of course the girls have to beat girls that can stand up to somebody like that as well so every 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 series i've got is interlinked um red heart ranch is set in montana texan rangers is set in um texas and their interlinked series as well we've got a guy that travels up and down the country as well north to south that interlinks those series as well so all the series are always interlinked there's little cameos and little easter eggs buried in everywhere i'm sure nobody will ever find them all <laughs> and that's okay but i i just love i just love doing it Wow, oh, I love it. You had me at the Texas one. That's where I am. I've been born and raised in Texas, and I I am now currently vowing I'm never just going to leave my state. I love it. It is just, I love it. So you had me at your Texas Ranger, the romance one, which actually is up on my screen. The Texan Devil book, too, is one that's actually up on my screen currently. So that's amazing. So I know that you're going to be a speaker at Love of Palooza. So what are you going to be talking mm-hmm. on? 
Um, pretty much all things romance. I can talk on romance all day on writing process, um, what it feels like to become a writer from being a reader um, and just falling in love with romance altogether. I've also got a workshop there for aspiring authors on character scars, which is something I'm doing with my own new podcast that launches next month called Author Aid as well. So there's a stack of things going on in my life at the moment. I'm also the marketing manager for Romance Writers of Australia and I'm organising a couple of conferences for this year in Fremantle and next year in Sydney as well. So there is so much, so much going on. And like I said, I can talk publishing and writing and romance and reading. Just get me started. I'm good. I'll keep talking. I love it. No, I love it. You feel free. Feel free to keep talking. I absolutely love that. So I know that you are over in Australia and you mentioned some of the things mm -hmm. that you're going to do. So how many more yeah. books this year can we expect to see from you that are romance books? <laughs> uh, without flicking over to the schedule, I think there I worked out, I was doing a newsletter just before this. I think I've got two for the next two or three months coming out each month. And then Christmas is uh, Christmas is a bit of a write-off. So I think there's four or five books coming out that month. So there's quite a few. I, usually I put out around 20 books a year. So we'll see how we go. Wow. So what does your writing process look like? Do you just have it where like the character speaks to you? Do you have to plot everything out or do you just kind of write by the seat of your pants and you'll edit it later? Um, I'm an outliner. So I sit down, I have an idea. Usually the idea has been in my head for quite a while before it gets to the page um, simply because there's such a big backlog <laughs> of ideas. I, I tried to schedule out a book of month, I hit 2027 and just started writing series names because there is just no way I can keep up with all the ideas. So I just started writing series names down. Um, I get up at five in the morning, I start writing um, and until I'm ready to make kids lunches and take the kids to school and then I come back to writing. And basically the outline is one or two lines per chapter for 20 chapters and I just jump in. That's it. There is a small series Bible. I didn't, for Blue Blooders Brothers, I didn't have a series Bible. And I got to book eight and realised that Liam doesn't have an eye colour. And I had to go back through every single book to make sure I hadn't tripped myself up, um, that he didn't have brown eyes. So I thought he had grey eyes. Then I thought he had brown eyes. My God, ran around my head because it took me a solid year to get that series out. And by the time that you're through book eight, you can't remember what you did in book one because it's a bit of a, a bit of a fuzz in your head. Oh, yeah. um, so I, I, I started doing the series Bibles after that because I needed to know who's had hair colour, who was related to which brother and what their names were and, you know, little tiny details that you just don't want to trip yourself up on basically. Yeah. No, I could I could see that, especially with you. You know, you have so you're pumping out so many books and your series that are going on. I could totally I relate to you and it just being fuzzy like what all was in book one because I'm on book like 20 and I don't remember, you know, so I could totally relate. And that would be that would be me 100 percent. So where do you find your inspiration to write these romances? Does it just kind of come to you and you see it? Do you dream it? What's how what drives you? I. Uh space I think it's about having mind space for new ideas to pop up so every now and then there is a time where I my head feels cluttered and I simply need to clean it out normally because I've got a 45 minute um, drive to and from school each day I normally dictate as well so this morning I left the music on and didn't dictate um, and uh, naturally now I've got space and a couple of more ideas have popped up so that was exciting um, <laughs> I'm sure I'll find time for them somewhere uh, Honestly, it's, it's just about having space, space for the ideas to flourish. But be warned, if you go down that path, be prepared because once the floodgates open, you cannot close them again. The, the ideas just keep coming and you have to pick what you want to write. If I, I could go down the path of dystopia, I could go down, go down the path of PNR, but I choose to stick with my cowboys and my cops, basically. They're, that's what I love doing. Nice. I love the way that you say that once the floodgates are open, it's just going to keep coming, but you have to have, you know, almost like a clear mindset sometimes and just do a, a reset. I think that's important for writers because, you know, you hear about writer's block and things all the time and that is very real. And so I yep. love that you said that and you said it so elegantly and just, you know, floodgates are open, let things go, you know, don't always be writing. Sometimes you have to just give your mind time to reset and clear and that is, yes, that is as a mother, not so much as a writer, but as a mother, it's one of those things. Sometimes I got to hide in my closet for five minutes. Okay. And there may or may not yep. be a bottle of wine in there, you know? Hi. Yes, yeah, look, a, a lot of coffee, a whole lot of coffee. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Sophia, thank you so much for taking time out of your morning to come and talk to us about 
what you're going to be speaking about at Love of Palooza and just about your romance books. And you as a writer, I love getting to know you guys and hearing your stories and how many books you guys have put out. It is just so impressive. And I'm gaining such a love for romance authors. I believe Russell said it on another one that we were on, but what you guys do is so hard creating these scenes and these characters and keeping it going and making it relatable and keeping the passion and everything that you do in there. And it is incredibly, incredibly difficult. So thank you so much for being a romance writer. Thanks for taking time out of your day to come and talk to us. Make sure you tune in to Love of Palooza. June 17th is the kickoff and it ends on June 26th. Make sure you come listen to Sophia, hear more about her books and what she says about being an author and the whole process about a character building, everything she can talk about it. So this is the person you definitely are going to want to ask some questions to. But until next time,